Repairs things for the repair shop is Mr. David Burville. And I'd like to welcome him to the stage now for you, Mr. David Burville. Hey, hey. Good evening, everybody. Oh, <laughs> David, lovely to have you with us. It's thank great you, to thank you, John. <laughs> nice great to see you. You too. Wonderful. Yeah. We're yeah. back. It's, we're back. It's, oh, it's, it's good to be here, isn't it? It really is wonderful to be back. Yeah, and, uh, and to see so many people as well. Absolutely wonderful. Now, David, um, what, what I want to do is perhaps ask you a little bit about your uh, time here at the Great Dorset Steam Fair because you've been here a fair bit in the past. And uh, I also then want to talk a bit about the TV work that you've been doing. Yeah. So, um, before we get to the TV work, let me just ask you, what's your earliest recollection of the Great Dorset Steam Fair? Well, technically, I think my first Dorset Steam Fair was actually spent in the womb. Um, because uh, that was that was my very first one, um, and I actually think this is my forty-first Dorset. Forty-first, yeah, Dorset. So, but you're still only thirty-eight. Well, yeah, but that's organ building. That's what that does do. Got, got a few <laughs> miles on the clock. <laughs> That's lovely. Now, um, a, a little bird told me that um, uh, one of the other legends of the show is the uh, infamous Dr. Busker, yes. who uh, performs in the Real Isle Tent. I believe he's starting his performance this evening at about 9.30 at the Real Isle Tent, and will be there for the next two evenings. But you recall Dr. Busker from a fairly early age. Yes, yes, absolutely. We, uh, we actually had a large organ on the show ground, and... Uh, several years running we got parked next to the tent that Dr Buster was in and um, anyway we were probably only 10 11 years old very young and uh, we wasn't allowed to go into the tent because of the you know the rude language and this sort of thing but we just said well we don't need to go in the tent because we can hear it from the caravan so you know we, we had quite a quite a fun time growing up you know <laughs> So you had a bit of a baptism of fire, to recall. Absolutely, so absolutely. And fire and beer, from a fairly early age. Okay, but what you're better known for, David, here now is, is, is organs. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and the organ is mechanical uh, instruments, etc. Uh, tell me, how did that all start? Well, really, really, it stemmed from my dad. Um, he inherited a, a large organ that we used to travel. And uh, so, really, I was born into... Um, travelling with the organs and he used to do his own repairs and that sort of thing so of course I would I would be there as a kid seeing this thing in bits and I think the fascination for it stemmed from there um, and then I made the mistake of actually starting it as a job and, uh, <laughs> and you haven't looked back no it's been down the other way <laughs> okay that, that's fabulous now um, one of the organs you've worked on, and in fact it's got your name on it right here. I don't know if everybody can see this, right down here. It, it doesn't say Dr. Burville, <laughs> it probably should. It actually says Dr. Burville, um, amongst other reputable names in the organ business. So David, tell me a little bit more about this organ, and why is your name on it? Well, this was, this was actually built in France, um, and it was sent over to Germany. Um, probably in about 1896, so it's, it's a good vintage, and um, it spent its years on the fairs in Germany. Uh, it then fell into disrepair, but it was rescued and then it was enlarged into what you see now by the second name, Mr. Boyd. Um, Gavioli was actually the original builder, um, and then um, I had it in about 10 years ago, for approximately two years. Um, and it took almost all of that time to do it. Um, and then, uh, yes, I added a few little bits, so I'm the smaller percentage of the, of so, the name. But <laughs> so what you're really trying to tell us is that this isn't really a gabioli. No, no, it, it started life as one, but um, it, uh, yeah, it got added to a little bit on the way, yeah, and I just finished it off a bit. So. Really, ladies, I think we can honestly say that this organ in front of you is now a burville, not a gabioli. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't go that far, but it's, it's uh, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of heart and soul went into it, for sure. <laughs> Let's love it here. Now, one of the things I'd like to hear, then, is perhaps an example of how this thing works. Um, we've got a piece of music which um, well, it punches up where we're at right now. I mean, three years since we've been here at the Great Dorset Steam Fair. We're back. 
Yep. Yeah. Happy days. Happy days. Okay. Let's play happy days. Just yeah, see what it go. sounds like. Go ahead, that, ladies and gentlemen. That's happy days. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. Now, David, well, let's let's get to the bit that everybody wants to hear about. <laughs> let's talk of television, shall we? <laughs> now, you've been now featured in more than twenty of the BBC's repair shop. Yeah. yeah. So you've you've done a fair bit of work for them. Now you've seen various items come through the door. And you've had your hands on some of them. Yeah, yeah. First of all, tell us how did you get into this? How did this happen? Well, it was it was funny, really. I had a I had a phone call. I'd done a previous program for a, a, a Channel Four show, and um, anyway, and it was okay, but it wasn't the sort of stardom and fame and fortune, you know, and that sort of thing. And then I had a phone call from this obscure sort of you know daytime television show. And um, anyway, it was it was could, could I do a certain item for them? And I said, well, I don't know. Yes, I can, I suppose. Do you want me to do it at my workshop? And they said, no, no, we want you to do it in a barn in the middle of East Sussex. And, um, and that, so, uh, right, okay. You've got to bring all your tools. And, uh, right, okay. So anyway, I headed down to this dusty old barn and, um, I never looked back really, it was, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's been quite an enjoyable oh, journey. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, I mean, the team down there are absolutely fantastic. Um, it was really Steve Fletcher, the clock man. Um, he, he was the one that said, in the organs, you must do all sorts of different things with, with wood and metal and that. He said, I'm sure they can find you more work to do. I'll have a word with them, you know. And it was really, it was really him that, that set it off further. So, yeah, it was great, great. That's super. But do you remember the first item that you prepared for them? Yes. And talk about being thrown in the deep end. Um, it, was, it was the most obliterated, damaged harmonium organ. And um, it, uh, I, I really, I really did, you know, it was, it was terrible. <laughs> but, um, but there you are, you know, you, you, you crack on and, and uh, yeah, we, we did it and it was absolutely wonderful. And the lady that, that it was done for, she was over the moon and um, yeah, great, great. You, you say over the moon and something that's caught me whenever I've seen the show is, the emotion that's attached to a lot of these items. People coming through the door to see the finished item and they've all got tears in their eyes. Yeah. Is that really how it is? Do people really show that level of emotion? It's it's almost it's almost more. It, it, the, the, the cameras almost don't show the full scale of it. I mean, we, we can be sat there when they're filming the reveal 
or, or even the arrival. And um, and it's just unbelievable the emotion that's in that room at that time. And we we be flooded with tears, you know. And um, yeah, it really is. It really is. It's heartwarming. But some of the stories are also absolutely crushing, you know. And um, so yeah, it, it really the television almost doesn't do it justice. I think you know. But incredible, yeah. That's, that's lovely to hear. I mean, it's certainly one of the nicer parts of that program. And I think it's one of those things that. For the of those kind of shows, it's the, the reality, it's the way that people react that we all look forward to seeing. And, yeah. and we kind of share in some kind of way those those joys of, of, of the finished product. Well, it's, it's, it's like they say, you know, everybody has got something that links them physically to another person that they've lost or, or is ill or something like that. And, um, and, and to have that back in the condition that they remember it, and it, it may have got damaged, they may have broken it, 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 it to have that back in pre, you know, prime condition sort of thing is actually wonderful, you know, and to be able to do that for somebody is, is fantastic, you know, yeah. Must be very satisfying. Yeah. That's absolutely yeah. fabulous. Yeah. Um, would you would you be able to share with us perhaps the, the, the best or, or what, what's the most notable restoration that you've done so far? Well, it's, it's funny actually because there's there's one that's coming out next next week, um, and that that I can't say anything much about it, but that is a, a really cracking item, and, and I had so much fun doing it, um, and there was a lot of personal link to it as well. Um, so that that you'll have to you'll have to watch for that one, um, but um, but. Previous items, yeah, I mean, we've, we've done so many different things. One that stands out is a, is a little automaton um, music box lady, and she was playing the piano, so she was automated. And, um, and that was a great collaboration between the teddy bear ladies, um, Steve Fletcher, the cop man, Steve Kember, the music box man, and myself. Um, and how we pulled it off, I don't know, but it was, it was, it was really good, yeah. yeah. So it, it does look as though there's an awful lot of collaboration that goes on with, oh, with yeah. the show. And you can see that when you watch the programmes. And so d does it genuinely all happen there at the repair shop? Or do you kind of sneak bits away? No, no, it, no it, we're under strict instructions that it's got to be done at the barn. Yeah, yeah. So it, it proves a little bit tricky. Unfortunately, if an item spans, you know, over a weekend, we get to go home, pick the tools up that we didn't bring, but that we needed, and then we go back and we carry on. So, yeah, yeah, but... So there you are, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you can heard it from the horse's mouth. It's genuine. Anything that's done at the repair shop is really done oh, at yeah, the repair shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely yeah, fabulous. Yeah, and it yeah. does look like a lovely collaborative approach with a lot of very skilled people. Yeah. And do you admire any particular individuals amongst oh, those? Oh, God. It, it, uh, I've been asked this question before, and I think I admire all of them in their own way. Um, you know, I, I, I'm... I've got a lot of respect for, for Steve Fletcher. I think he's he's absolutely wonderful, you know, and Susie, his sister, um, you know, and, and it's amazing with the different experts, so many of us, we, we overlap in certain fields. It's like with the organs, um, you have a lot of leather which is used in the, in the mechanism. And of course, Susie is a leather expert, but you've also got Dean, who's the shoe man, he's a leather expert. Uh, Chris Shaw, who's the bookbinder, he uses leather. Um, and then uh, Jayesh, the hat man, he uses leather. So we all talk, you know, about the different uses of just these one thing that overlaps, you know, and it's great. So yeah. simple commodities. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've learned so much since being there, just from having, you know, those people around me, and uh, it's, it's great, yeah, absolutely great. It's a wonderful experience. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got anything made of leather that you want repairing, David <laughs> and the team at the pair shop are your people to go to. The whole idea of the show is that it is open to everybody, and of course you can contact the show via the BBC website, and um, and then the items will be considered and this sort of thing. Obviously, we do have a lot of, of potential items, but you know they do they do get through, you know, and it, it, it's amazing what people have got tucked away and that. So yeah, yeah. 
That's lovely to hear. That's fabulous. Um, in a moment, we're going to be listening to a, a final piece of music, uh, which I believe you've selected. Um, but before we do that, we've got a little bit of time, and what I'd like to find out is is if there's any questions from our audience here this evening. Yeah, yeah. For David, yeah. either about the repair shop, about organs, well, anything, life in general. Yes. <laughs> and so, um, if anybody, I don't, I think, well, I'm going to hand my mic to uh, our compere Paul and uh, see if he'll uh, wander amongst you and take any questions. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, do we have any questions? Yeah, we said yeah. Well, put your hands up if you've got any questions. We'll bring the mic to you. Anybody? Can't think of any. <laughs> got one here, got one down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring them with the dancing women. <laughs> <laughs> there. So I think you want you to let her in. Oh, dear. Anybody's <laughs> got anything to ask? Anybody? <laughs> Nope, need mending. <laughs> just, just a plug for the show. They're, they're actually looking at the moment for items for the Christmas special. So if anybody has an item which is Christmas related that they, uh, they would like to go on the show, then they are actually looking specifically for Christmas related items. So again, you can contact them via the BBC website and, um, and then, uh, you know, that, that's a, yeah, a good potential. Hello, David. Did you um, work with anybody else other than your father to um, work on organs? Well, I, I started with that, you know, when I was a kid, but then I actually went to a, a local church organ builder um, and I did a three-year apprenticeship with them. Uh, and then after that, I actually went over to Belgium for two years um, and I worked for a company called Verbex. Uh, and in actual fact, there are one or two Verbex organs on this field. Um, and uh, yeah, and that was that was marvellous. That was specifically in this sort of organ. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was a great, actually great time. Yeah, great time. So. <laughs> We've got another question down here. I understand isn't there going to be an organ event down at the repair shop buildings? Yes, yes, that's true. Yes, yes. I think it's the 25th of September. Uh, it's a Sunday, that I do know. And um, it's actually held at the Weald and Downland Museum where the repair shop is filmed. And it's a public open event, open to the public event. And um, so there's going to be organs, vintage stuff, and it's dotted around the museum. And I'm not entirely sure, but I believe that the barn itself will actually be open, so the public can actually just go in and see where we work. And um, so it just gives you an idea of uh, the, the place in general. So um, it's actually far smaller than it appears on the television. So this is one thing that a lot of people say. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> but um, just uh, yeah, another another little another little plug. Obviously, they've got the new series or the continuation of the new series, which is showing at the moment. And um, we've had the first couple of episodes. It's on BBC One at eight o'clock on Wednesday evening and um, you can catch it on iPlayer if you miss it on the actual time and uh, there's lots and lots of wonderful things to come so um, there's some real real cracking items yeah so so your favourite repair is coming out this coming Wednesday? Absolutely, Wednesday? yep, yep, yep. That's fabulous. So there we are, tune in to BBC One or the iPlayer yeah. um, and watch David doing whatever it is that you're <laughs> going to do next week. <laughs> of course, you don't know what it's going to be yet, do you? No, absolutely not, no, no. <laughs> okay, David, one final question I have for you, um, and it, it's, it's quite simply this. This fantastic instrument that's behind us, that you've had so much to do with over time, uh, and your name is on the front. Fabulous. If you had to test it to its limit, what piece of music would you have 
Well, there, there's there's a rather fantastic ABBA medley, um, but it's 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 quite a long piece of music, so I don't think we've got quite time enough for it. But um, anyway, I've got I've got a slightly shorter piece. It's a Robbie Williams piece. Let me entertain you. It's a modern piece, but the organ handles it really well, and it, it proves that something that's over a hundred years old is actually relevant and can play up to date music. These things were built to play modern music of the time and they're still capable of playing modern music now so um, yeah it uh, should suit it very well and what a wonderful way to start the evening off really is um, and entertain us absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen before we go into that um, following the next piece of music we'll be continuing with the evening show here which will feature um, Paul Ritchie and the Oktoberfest dancers. Yep. So do stay seated for that. In the meantime, I'm going to say thank you very much to David Burble. Yep. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, Thanks, David. Yeah, thank you. you. Thank you. To you. Thank I hope you enjoyed that little insult. And I just, I just like to say thank you to Graham's crew. Um, they put on a marvellous show every year, and obviously Martin Oliver and all of his team. They put on a marvellous, marvellous show. And enjoy the rest of the show. Hopefully the weather holds out. Thanks ever so much. Take care. <laughs> thank you. Let's enter. Thank you, Music Maestro.